Hello, my name is Quentin. I uh, figured I would throw myself out there for a booktube channel and um, I wanted to start with uh, kind of uh, talking about 40 Second Parallel by uh, John, jo John Dos Passos. Uh, interesting modernist novel. Um, and before I read, I want to do a reading and talk about it because I find it really uh, emotionally uh, impactful and it's a great section. But, uh, okay, so I'll just, I'll make a couple of remarks about, you know, the goal of the book, um, stuff like that. I haven't read the rest of the USA trilogy, though. I'm pretty excited to, even if this section is kind of tough sometimes. Uh, the shift in styles, he doesn't nail it all the time. Um, but, it, but it is, it's quite nice. And, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's good. But... Okay. So I think the goal of the book is to immerse readers in uh, kind of post-1900, pre-World War One era USA. That's pretty obvious. Um, and the way he does that is the most interesting part of the book, right? It's, it's uh, the formal experimentation here is just, uh, it's kind of thrilling. And it's really, when it's done well, holy crap, is it ever done well. And, um, but how he does this is he keeps, uh, there are four types of sections that he will basically f go through, like they're scattered all throughout. It's not section one, section two. Um, but firstly, you have the narratives, usually around 20 pages, 20, 30 pages usually. And what they normally do is basically, you know, there's a, a, a main character of the uh, section, sections are named after characters. And that character will basically go out and try to find their way in then modern America. And uh, what they do there is is really, it's, it's interesting stuff. And you see them kind of react to the times uh, in interesting ways. Uh, the next section I'll talk about newsreel sections, which are collages of newspaper headlines. They're collages of uh, yeah, newspaper headlines. Uh, what else? Uh, song lyrics, maybe a little bit of news stories. And it doesn't really matter if they're uh, real because you know I think I think the Titanic pops up in, in this and it's uh, a lot of them I don't know if they're real headlines but they kind of give you a really good sense of the texture of the time and what these characters in the narrative sections are actually like seeing in the newspaper there are characters that run newspapers uh, there's socialist unions all, all type of interesting interesting things right you have biographies uh, a lot of satire in them but there's also like a yeah, a lot of satire, and uh, not only satire, but there's a lot, and and they're interesting because like they kind of show you views of the people who made the America that the, that the characters are dealing with in the narrative sections, and uh, those those are pretty strong sections. I I really enjoy those, especially kind of um, learning about all those uh, a lot of the less talked about um, American figures that he that he does. Uh, although there are some pretty po pretty popular ones that turn up. And then there's my favorite section. Every time the, the camera eye turns on, I, I love it. I love stream of consciousness. Um, and John Dos Passos' uh, approach to it is so fresh. It, it's it's quite good. Uh, almost always uh, really good. And what he's normally doing with these sections is... Okay. Um, so, so the cultural, like, in the newsreel sections, you're getting the headlines, but you know, you're getting in the biography sections, you're getting, you know, the people behind the cultural conditions, the narratives is it's all of the cultural conditions and it's a character placed in and they have to make decisions and essentially find their way through. But the camera eye is Dos Passos basically singling out those cultural, um, those cultural conditions that maybe their cultural shifts, maybe their new developments, um, I want to see, say new, new developments in technology, but no, uh, nothing, no sections coming to mind for that. Uh, but yeah, it, it's that type of, of stuff. Um, there's a lot of talk about riots and streetcar wheels uh, in some of my favorite uh, sections. Uh, tech, technology, um, 
kind of the business, you know, business is uh, getting a little more insane, a little more uh, important in people's lives. And yeah, John Doe's pacifist and the camera eyes just singling them out one by one and their stream of consciousness. So you're getting from a character's perspective, which is just the, the part of it that I really enjoy is that he's making it impact someone's life and you're getting them thinking through it, which is always uh, a better approach than like, you know, just telling me what happened. If I wanted to read nonfiction, you know, that'd be, uh, I'd read nonfiction. I do read nonfiction, but you know, I, I go to this for the for the emotion of it, right? And and I'll, I'm gonna read uh, Camera I-17. Uh, the spring you could see Halley's Comet. And I love that one. That might be my favorite Camera I. And it's kind of about, well, well I'll read it. Uh, but I'd like to just talk about, you know, organized religion at this time is shifting to kind of more more personal forms of spirituality. And it's organized religion is, is lacking something in a lot of people's lives at this time. And this is pre beats, right? Uh, pre the beat movement, which which is interesting because that is when they they start they start they start to bring in more Eastern um, spirituality. But it's pre beats, and it's uh it's kind of crazy that don't, those Pasos is writing this, and I think the thirties. It's cool. It's cool, man. But um. I'll read the um, the section, and you can see what I mean by the uh, by just knowing that uh, it's a more personal perspective than you know than just the facts and stream of consciousness too. The spring you could see Halley's Comet over the elms from the back top floor windows of the upper house. Mr. Greenleaf said you would have to go to confirmation class and be confirmed when the bishop came. And next time you went canoeing, you told Skinny that you wouldn't be confirmed because you believed in camping and canoeing and Halley's Comet and the universe and the sound the rain made on the tent the night you'd both read at the Hound of the Baskervilles. And you'd hung out the stake on a tree and the hound must have smelt it because he kept circling around you and howling something terrible. And you were so scared, but you didn't say that. You don't know what you said, not in church. And Skinny said, if you'd never been baptized and you couldn't, then you couldn't be confirmed. And you went and told Mr. Greenleaf and he looked very chilly and said, you'd better not go to confirmation class anymore. And after that, you had to go to church Sundays, but you could go to either one you liked. So sometimes you went to the congregational and sometimes to the Episcopalian. And the Sunday the bishop came, you couldn't see Halley's Comet anymore. And you saw the others being confirmed and it lasted for hours because there was there were a lot of little girls being confirmed too. And all you could hear was mumble mumble this thy child, mumble mumble this thy child. And you wondered if you'd be alive next time Halley's Comet came round. How good is that? Um, you know, just general comments on that. Kind of a, a quietly poetic, um, quietly poetic section, more poetic in some spots, but I, I love the sort of naive, um, the sort of naivety and, uh, and in their spirituality and this sort of childlike wonder at uh, how great, um, you know, the world is. And uh, that's pretty impactful, but it's taking place in a time where it's not really that great. And there's a, there's a stress placed on the naivety there. Um, but the main question is what to mature into. These character, this character is thinking about, you know, you know, you know, confirmation. It's basically like, um, yeah, this character, he doesn't want to mature, or I say he, we don't know if it's he. Uh, they don't want to mature into what the church wants them to mature into. They don't want to mature into something that's kind of pre, you know, that, that society has like, uh, I guess, you know, they don't want to mature into something society wants them to mature into. They want to do their own thing. And it's, um, it's, it's pretty interesting. And, and that, that ending, you know, how these comment, they see it, it's this kind of, um, representation of, of like, you know, it, well, no, <laughs> it's, it's the inspiration. They see it and they're like, oh, you know, I want to be close to nature and I don't want to deal with all these kind of organized sort of structures and organized religions and go to class. I want to go out and live in the world and, and find my meaning that way and find my spiritual, uh, my spiritual identity that way. And they see it once, but they never, they don't, they don't see it again. Uh, 
And it's, it's interesting to note that this is second person. It's a stream of consciousness, second person. And it's in the past tense, uh, right? So, so you get a sense that this character is alienated from who they once were. And they're thinking about what they wanted to mature into. And we don't know if they matured into it. It doesn't sound like they do. Um, the, the events that this narrator picks out, that is that his thought picks out, his thought, their thought picks out, is really, um, it hints to a sort of doubt and anxiety in the character, right? They, they know in the first paragraph, they know what they want to mature into. They want to, they believe in the universe and camping and the sound the rain makes on the tent. And by the end of it, they're wondering where the hell Hallie's Comet was, you know, where the hell the inspiration was again. They're there's a sense of doubt and anxiety that, that is just really palpable. And, and it's so, there's such pathos to it. And, um, yeah, just it's such a beautiful, like kind of quietly poetic ending. Um, yeah, just a beautiful, 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 um, I guess beautiful section and I love the sort of long rambling thought patterns how it it reads at a million miles an hour I don't have the breath to read it like you do in your mind but you you, you just don't stop and you just truck keep on trucking all the time and, and uh I don't know I certainly think like that <laughs> when when I you know um uh, I talk like that you probably notice uh my uh yeah so I don't know. I think that's about it. I, I could go on reading, but uh, yeah, the stream of consciousness uh, passages, the camera eye, the, you know, it's worth thinking about the camera eye. It's the perspective through which modern America takes place. It's the perspective through which the book takes place. And um, those are the best sections. The narrative sections are truly incredible, but you have to, like all the character swapping, you really have to like, He's juggling a lot of balls, man. He, he's got his... You really got to pay close attention to the narrative sections and just kind of give him like five pages to get you back into it. But when he does, he can... Those passos can really hit you in the face with some just beautiful, emotive uh, scenes and arcs. And then um, the newsreel sections occasionally... One of the things that confuses me is the sequencing between the sections and the newsreel sections are kind of shaped so that you might get one symbol. Uh, there's a point in the middle of the book where you get uh, the, the moon gets introduced and then it'll reappear in the narrative sections and it'll reappear in the camera eye sections as if there's some sort of defined ordering sequence between these. But I'm not convinced that there is a really rigid ordering system between all these. But the newsreel sections generally are, are kind of... Um, they'll test their patience for sure <laughs> for sure uh but they they are pretty interesting um they, they they do serve a purpose i mean say what you want fun to read or not but they serve the purpose um biographies are really fun to read though i think there's i want to say the the electric wizard like, like the band or something <laughs> but there's a good one uh later on yeah the yeah the electrical wizard um uh yeah big bill um, yeah, Th those are really, uh, really interesting ones. And I, you could basically, you could pick out like, I want, I want to say in, in the, based on the first book of the series, you could probably pick out like eight out of every 10 camera eye sections and you're going to get fireworks. Like they are just like the best, but I, but I do love uh stream of consciousness and I, I find I find it fun, but, uh, I'm, you know, I'm rambling again. Um, anything else I wanted to say? No, not really. Um, I don't know. I guess I'll welcome myself to booktube as if, uh, as if anybody gives a shit, but, uh, yeah.
if someone's watching and they've somehow managed to watch me like for, for 15 minutes just rambling about uh the, the stuff i'm into that no one else in my life cares about then uh you know thank you um you know i hope you subscribe i guess i don't know um i don't know man <laughs> um yeah uh peace and groovy